Hey guys, welcome back. This is Mana, and today we're going to continue on with our extraterrestrial researcher scenario. Let's hop right in. Okay, let's see. Well, we've got three babies and it's a massive dust problem. Let's see. Work wise, these have 12 breakthroughs. Well, we need to get to space. Well, let's explore space for sure. What other upgrades do we need to do? Wormhole generator. <laughs> Dad's just taken off. Ooh, mysterious message. Once in orbit, Kirby. Curtis gets an odd message from the International Sim Space Station. It's badly garbled. It makes little sense. Curtis decides to fly over and check it out. Technical difficulties. Curtis arrives at the station, station, which is unusually dark. He flips on a flashlight and starts and is startled by a disheveled looking astronaut. Thank goodness you came. Our main power coupling is shot. Is there anything you can do to help? We can try and fix it. Oh yeah, we're a one star celebrity. Handy hero. Using some paper clips, half a box of aluminum foil, and a plunger, Curtis manages to cobble together a new power coupling. Upon installing it, the space station hums back to life. The crew is very grateful. Ooh, we're up. Oh yeah, we got one. Oh yeah, we got two out of five. Sweet deal. Oh, baby's hungry. Julia, hurry. Whoa, that's a lot of books. New Year's Eve, she, oh, she wants to do absolutely everything for New Year's Eve. Well, that's no good. Do we, I don't think we have a TV. Ooh, parenting, level eight parenting. These little itty bitty houses. Love grows best in small houses. Okay, dad, notable newcomer. You need a nap, oh no. Oh, there's a diaper, dirty diaper. And dad's gonna pass out, which is great. And he's freezing. We almost died, that's beautiful. Almost died. Oh, he needs to make a resolution. That's, we'll get a promotion. Julia, what do you want? Let's make a resolution of I think she needs to work out for work. Not yet. Oh no. Alien baby is awake. Dawn. The, the humanest name I could think of. Oh, send off to homeworld. That's such a sad, sad thing. Curtis would never do that. And it makes him more involved with the MIB, I guess. So he can find the pollination, pollination technician number three. Is that who the mother was? We're changing more diapers and we're looking for aliens. Oh, Julie, Julie wants. Oh, she missed it. Ah, well. Aw. Cuties. Okay, she's gonna get hysterical. Sleep, sleep. She's slap happy. She's overtired. No, Julia. Go. Oh, you got out of bed to crash oh my gosh when is every when is their birthdays it's it's everybody's birthdays today and then julie's is tomorrow all right we'll deal with that maybe she will cook him a birthday cake then yeah we'll just do that one. Oh yes you like cooking perfect okay add birthday candles and then no one will eat it. I hope. Oh my goodness. Dirty diapers. Bottle feed. He's so cute. And Kua. Make a wish. Blow out the candles. Curtis age up. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you take a piece of your birthday cake? Oh, Don aged up. Yeah, okay, what has he got? Oh, he's angelic. I knew it. He's are gonna be our perfect little alien baby. Baby. And senior pollination technician three sent Dawn a gift. Aw. Put down here. 
so then we can get rid of his baby bed. Oh, we really don't have much. So we'll just get like a little, little car for him and a green potty. And he kind of needs a bed. Cute little alien. Daddy, you are filthy. Yeah, let's do that. Can we age these ones up now too? Let's age up. I mean, we'll have three toddlers in the house. Oh boy, okay. Eat the ham dinner that mom had. Ooh, okay. Van is independent. Yeah, they like to do everything by themselves and they, they get skill building boosts if they do it themselves. That's pretty awesome. Oh, three toddlers. You know, our alien baby's older. I don't know why he didn't age up yesterday or something. Oh my goodness. Okay, Van. Okay, Lexi, what are you? Oh, a little cha charmer. Toddlers love to socialize. They learn communication skill faster and don't suffer stranger danger from strangers. They can share the love with other Sams. Ooh, that'll be nice. It's not too bad, actually. I don't have bad kids. Okay, Dad, I hate to break it to you. You need to go explore space again. We need this. Dad's going off to space, and I hope he finds some more critters. Oh, calm alert. Curtis is just about to beat his personal best time around the planet. Die, Scott, when a calm alert breaks his concentration. It's dispatch. Requesting assistance with a civil dispute on Hatuini. Hatuini. Itching for a change of scene, Curtis agrees to the mission and blasts over to see what's what. Colonists in revolt. On his way over the, to the planet, Curtis gets more details from dispatch. It seems that colony on planet Hadouin's moon is threatening to revolt and start their own government. Negotiations have broken down, and since neither side will take talk to the other, it's up to Curtis to mend the rift. Who will he talk to first? Well, the moon's closer, so we'll talk to the moon. Ooh, Moon of the Oppressed. Curtis decides to skip the propaganda and get the story from the colonists first. The instant he lands on the yellow moon, his rocket ship is surrounded by a mob of angry looking colonists, claiming that the planet government is oppressive. They plan on sabotaging the planet's food replicators to make only non-grilled cheese. What should Curtis do? Let's assist the colonists. The, an onslaught of non-grilled cheese. With Curtis's help, the colonists quickly assess Hatuin's food replicators. Not only are, are they making non-grilled cheese, but they're making them 1,000 times faster than before. Buried under an avalanche of an inedible sandwiches, the government surrenders, agreeing to reopen the talks if the colonists undo their handiwork. A victorious Curtis flies home, reward in hand. Ooh, an unidentified fruit object. Oh, well, I didn't know aliens could do that. Oh, oh, my head's in the road. Oh, cuties. I do like toddlers. Toddlers are crazy, but they're cute. How come he's sad? Oh, he had a nightmare. Poor baby. At 3 a.m., <laughs> get some leftovers, because why not? And then go go to space. There he goes, all gone. Ooh, abduction. Curtis doesn't remember much, but he thinks he may have been abducted. He now stands in a small, sterile area. A motley assemblage of hideous beings sits fur furtively in the bleachers. Slowly, a pedestal rises from the floor. It contains two items, a ball and a container with two holes, one round and one triangular. The room is tense with excitement. Put the ball in the round hole. Applause. 
The round ball deftly slides into the round hole and the room erupts into furious applause. Curtis instinctively bows graciously as the puddle re puzzle recedes back into the floor, replaced by a new one. This next rising pedestal has a hat. Yes, a very fine hat, perhaps a derby. What should Curtis do? Wear the hat. Well done. Eureka, the hat goes on the head. More cheers spew forth from the crowd as Curtis rifles the hat into the stands with a flourish to be caught by one lucky fan. The hatless pedestal sinks and disappears into the ground and is shortly replaced again. This latest task pedestal appears to hold a chair, a simple metal chair. Sit in the chair. Classic alien prank. Curtis is a pro at putting his butt into butt reception areas. But he sits down without incident and the crowd goes wild, but they're not cheering. They're laughing. The pedestal chair Curtis assembles sinks into the floor like the other tests. Curtis is swallowed by a machination dumped unceremoniously into his rocket and blasted home. What a mean trick. Return home de dejectedly. Ooh, mail. Oh, we have a lot of bills. Um, he's gonna, I'm gonna send him alone today. Just because I want to make sure Julie get Julia gets to work. Yeah, sent to daycare. <gasps> shuttle cleaning. While servicing the latest dirty shuttle, Julia noticed something strange. There's a greenish moss growing on the underside of the wings. If the shuttle really went to the planet M Myotiki, there would be a lot, m lot of meteorite debris and no moss. Should Julia ask her boss or not ask questions? Ask the boss. Turns out the astronaut took the shuttle on an unapproved joyride and they will get fired. Although Julie doesn't like feeling like a snitch, her boss takes note of her attention to detail. Also, those astronauts were kind of jerks anyway. Woohoo! Dad is home and dad is tense. Uh, clean out some spoiled food and got some money. We probably should pay some bills. Give bubble bath to Don because he is absolutely filthy. Oh, promoted to technician. Great job, mom. Oh, a mysterious message. Once in orbit, Kurtz gets an odd message from an international sim station. Badly garbled and makes up no sense. Kurtz decided to fly over and check it out. Uh, try and fix it. Oh, one dead space porcupine. Three of five. Sweet. Curtis has returned home from getting his dead space porcupine or whatever kind of porcupine. Ooh, peekaboo, where are you? Curtis stares down the formidable tower on a red planet. The cosmic relief dog pound isn't just a fable. It's real. Curtis is searching for Mrs. Fuzen's prize, prize peekaboo, a rare breed of space dog that could bring back bring bucks on the black market it will bring big bucks to curtis too if he brings it home on skates enter the pound welcome to the pound curtis parks his rocket ship and goes into the pound the alien at the front desk raises an eye as he walks in jobs filled she says curtis can explain about the missing dog or make an excuse to look around make an excuse maybe Ooh, the red leash well it looks like even the pound has its processes Having made up a story about losing his mutt, Curtis fills out a 13 forms while waiting for an escort to the cages. He is handling, handing them in when he notices a small red leash, much like Fritz's photo sticking out of a box under the desk. What now? Confront her. Like a good men in black. After double checking Fitz's photo in the men's room, Curtis asks the alien about the leash. Flustered, the alien begins to swell and turn yellow, but insists it came from a solar cat they had recently captured. Just then, Curtis hears a whimper from beneath the desk. Does he make a grab for the animal or wait for an explanation? Waited for an explanation? Oh, a flimsy excuse. Curtis is getting nowhere. The alien's explanation is half baked as the one before, possibly even quarter baked. He decides this is his chance and lunges for the animal. Got Pookaboo, Pookapoo. <laughs> it's Fritz. Before the alien can stop him, Curtis is out at the door with the prize pooch and on the way to collect his reward. A quick call to the Galactic Rangers on the way should take care of the pound's illegal animal trade. Return home. Ooh, dad's home. 
Okay, he came back from space. Did... Oh, we didn't get any anything else. Where was our reward from finding the pooch? No? Oh, she aged up at home. Oh, <laughs> darn it. Okay, we're going to join him today because we want to get that wormhole generator thingamajig. Okay. <laughs> oh, look at that. We can work on their rocket. I have my neighborhood. Dance party it. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> it's a useless day. Everybody's home. Let's change their diapers. Because apparently at daycare, they don't get changed. Ooh, everybody's run, run, run. Where are you going? <laughs> Say hi to mom. Okay. Asteroid approaching. An asteroid is rocketing towards the planet. What is Curtis going to do? Well, we're going to try and blast it. Success. The asteroid shatters and fragment burns up the harmless lineage of the asteroid. For Curtis, able to grab some fragments, that plastic loose. Nice. Space rock. Curtis went off to work. Mom is going to do all her little things. Oh, well, they're not really here. Are they just little ghosts? What, what's going on? Like, why are they here? I can't interact with them. <laughs> yeah, but they're making a mess. It's great. Tag, tag the yard. It's fine. It's fine. Toddlers home alone. That's... How did they get forgotten? I guess they could build some skills. Oh, they're back now. Well, that's just beautiful. Lexi, you're the only one who went to went to school. Julia made it home. Promoted to laboratory leader. Curtis has been promoted to laboratory leader. He will now make an additional 40 simoleons per hour for a grand total of 142. And he's also received the following bonus. Uh, 816 in a hygienic decontamination pod. And then he works on Monday. Well, I'm going to have to leave it here. We really on we only have two more aliens left to find and we better find them on the next episode. Until then, I guess I'll say goodbye. See you next time. My goodness. We found two. This is taking forever. <laughs> the next one is the last one, I promise.